it's like okay, so we're gonna be talking about the midheaven, the tenth house. You know, that house ruled by Capricorn and Saturn that pretty much dictates your public image in a sense where um, it's how people see you online or at work and yeah, and how you achieve things. You know, I'm going to be talking about how each midheaven um, achieves goals, I guess. That's how what I'm exactly going to talk about. Where the drive lands in the midheavens and how they achieve said goals that are long term. Anyways, cue that cringy intro, fam. More ironic than Pink Comic Sans. Um, why am I, um, doing the Midheaven first? Well, I'm gonna tell you why. Basically, um, the Midheaven, like I said, is your public image, your public persona, your public whatever. How you act at work or on the internet. And where are we right now? The internet. The beautiful place called the internet. You don't know what you're gonna find here. You're gonna find some really weird shit. But other than that, you're not seeing my ascendant at the moment. You're seeing my very um, influenced midheaven. So that's what you're seeing for me right now. You're not seeing what I, what face I put on at parties or like the face I put on when I first meet people. You're seeing a totally different face from me. <laughs> and usually um, when you see um, someone's content or hear it or I'm not really sure, you know, when, when you see someone on social media or hear someone on social media, you are probably you you are getting their midheaven and usually the midheaven squares the ascendant mine doesn't but usually that's the case so basically i guess i am just going to talk about what you know from the internet and the people from the internet rather than um what you'd see from these people on the internet at parties I might do another video explaining how the sun signs would be at parties if you want me to, but we're going to be talking about how the midheavens conquer their goals. So let's move on. So Aries midheaven. We're going to start off with Aries because it's the first sign. So basically if this person has maybe a Mars-ish midheaven, you know, Mars is conjuncting, squaring, opposing, or trining the midheaven then this would also um, apply to them. But mostly this is for an Aries midheaven, so you know if they have Aries on the 10th house cusp. Anyways, um, these people, how they approach their projects, they basically charge right at them. They don't really think about, um, you know, what is involved with the project exactly. They don't really, you know, dive deep into the actual issues that they're going to face. Until they face them, it's either their choice to be brave or run away. Um, you know, it depends on how big the issue is and how they'd personally take it. But basically, um, these people just run right into things and do not, think like, you know, have a steady plan and kind of just go with the flow when it comes to projects. They have an impulsive, um, you know, think of Kanye West tweets, he's an Aries midheaven, but, um, you know, they have an impulsive confidence, um, you know, fiery, um, presence to them on the internet. They probably will post memes, like, they're, they're probably meme lords, I'm not even joking, they're, they're a meme lord midheaven, along with Gemini and Aquarius, like, those are the meme lord fam, um, Basically, they might post memes, they, you know, they're the ones who have, like, a young face out there, they don't care, and you kind of want to be them because they're just confident and they know what they're doing. Well, at least they look like it, and they, you know, run after things, they're, like, playing Roy, but, you know, behind Roy, Rick's playing it and not Morty. 
So I guess that's a good analogy to throw out how Aries Midheavens accomplish their goals. <laughs> Basically it is with impulsive, like being impulsive, um, you know, just charging right at it and not giving a shit, um, showing the best face they could, and um, if they accomplish something, they accomplish something. If they don't, they don't. But they'll probably go after many things because, you know, they might actually get bored with one project or realize that one project is just not for them. And they are natural born leaders because, you know, they're the, they're the first cardinal sign, right? They're the OG cardinal. Um, so, you know, they are natural leaders and they do have to be in charge. You can't limit them too much or they'll get angry. They're not down for limitations or, you know, people get in their way or bossing them around. You know, they have to be the boss. They have to rule over their career life. And yeah, let's move on to Taurus. Okay, so the second Midheaven sign is Taurus. When it comes to Taurus, they need to work in luxury. Um, how they achieve their goals is, um, well, they can't just, you know, achieve them anywhere. They have to ch achieve them in a comfortable spot, you know. They need to chill. They need to take time to perfect whatever they're doing. You know, this is Venus. Venus is kind of slow, and by that I mean they're not, like, dense. But they like to take their time. Libra likes to, um, balance options. Taurus, um, you know, Taurus is Earth. They like to perfect things. They like to put their best work forward. You know, they, usually people, you know, classify Venus as the lazy sign, well, the lazy planet, because, you know, it's all about luxury and love and, you know, your interests. But basically, um, when it comes to that, uh, they can be hardworking. That's their other side, but they need to take put in the time and effort. You know, they want to put glitter on the paper, as well as that new t Times New Roman good shit that you know is kind of smart. I hope that made sense. But basically, Taurus needs to take their time and needs to chill on their yogi bow to accomplish their work. And basically, um, that's basically it. They need, they need, um, people to be patient with them. They need to be patient with themselves. They need to, you know, have one thing in front of them at a time. And once they got, get rid of that one thing, they're good. And they put so much time and so much effort into it. And you know what? It turns out being pretty good. If they put enough in there and d don't slack off and say, yeah, this is kind of boring and I kind of don't want to do this and this is kind of not going to benefit me in the future. When it comes to Taurus, they like, you know, financial stability, you know, that that's their, that's their good shit. So, you know, if it's not going towards financial stability or emotional stability for that matter, because, you know, Taurus exalts the moon, then, you know, what's the point? And they're going to slack off and say, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know how else to put it, so. Okay, yeah. so I forgot to add a Taurus Midheaven example, so I'm going to do that right now. Um, the first one is Marilyn Manson. You might be like, Sam, he doesn't seem like this natural hippie Taurus dude. What are you talking about? Well, um, from at least the older inf interviews that are out there, because I watched like this like old documentary of him going to Japan, I don't know why. I tend to watch some interesting things on YouTube for the fact of the matter, but you know, I did watch a documentary of him and he seemed pretty chilled out. Um, you know, Taurus chills out whatever it touches, like to an extent that it's like tense and off-putting in a sense. Um, you know, I have a Taurus Ascendant, so Taurus is the face I show at parties, for the most part. Also Uranus, sun, my sun and my moon also aspect it, but, you know, Taurus is what I mainly show at parties. And when people meet me at first, they're like, oh, you're kind of tense, and you're kind of chill, and you kind of look like you smoke a lot of weed. What's up, fam? 
kind of weird too, but sup. And, you know, that's just how Taurus is. Um, with that, though, in the midheaven, you know, that just chills out someone's, you know, public image. And when you do see, like, Marilyn Manson interviews, he is super chilled out. Um, I'm not sure about the newer ones because I haven't watched them and I've only watched that weird... I only watched, like, two. But, and also in one of them, like, the one where someone's questioning about him, you know, his, like, thoughts on Columbine, he actually sounds, like, so professional through it. And he does kind of discuss, like, how advertising works and, like, how people spend their money and whatnot. It just made so much sense. And I don't know. I feel like that kind of relates to it, too, because even though Gemini rules over advertising and whatnot, Taurus kind of has a sense on how money is earned. and Because, you know, that money is their realm, so that's also a thing. And also, number two, Selena Gomez. She actually does have that vibe to her. You can kind of tell, you know, everything's, like, really pretty. Um, I'm not really sure. I haven't listened to Selena Gomez in a while, so I can't really say much about her music. But I know it, she does make music, and she does seem like she has a pretty face to show the public, at least. That is chilled. And, you know, she makes sure that she, like, you know, that there's, like, I don't know. Wait, no. I think the public makes sure that there are photos of her with fans and whatnot and just everything looks nice and yeah I don't know how else to elaborate on her because I don't I haven't really watched anything from her in a long time so yeah enjoy the rest okay, of the video. Okay so I'm gonna try to do this really quickly okay so I accidentally deleted the Gemini Midheaven video but when it comes to Gemini Midheavens or you know airy Mercury vibes you know um when Mercury has an air influence and is um, aspecting the midheaven in some sort of way or, or in the midheaven. Um, when it comes to that, these people need to socialize for their projects. Like, they don't have to be the leader, but they need to socialize, okay? They need to bounce ideas off of other people because that's what air does, especially Gemini and Libra. Um, even though Gemini is Mercury air, not Venus air, they are the esoteric ruler of Venus. So... With that being said, they do know how to appeal to other people. They rule over advertising along with communication and critical thinking. So keep that in mind and also short distance travel. But when it comes to Gemini, they need to socialize. They need to bounce ideas off of other people. They need to like, you know, talk to other people about what sounds good, what doesn't sound good, and what we could do better. So when they, they just have to bounce ideas and whatnot and do whatever they want, okay? When it comes to Sagittarius and Gemini Midheavens, um, Sagittarius and Gemini, they're a lot alike as sister signs, like I said. I, I don't even know if I said that, actually. But anyways, they're a lot alike. They're, like, when it comes to Gemini, though, they really give zero shits. When it in the in the midheaven area, when Sagittarius is in the midheaven area, they give a lot of shits. That's really the only difference, you know, between you know philosophical um, ninth house Sagittarius Jupiter shit and third house Gemini Mercury shit. Okay, but when either of those signs are in the midheaven, there um, that um, is a good place for authors. Um, it is a good place for people to be multi, you know, have be multitaskers when it comes to projects. Um, and it also is a good, like, place for, you know, people to be jack-of-all-trades, basically. More more so than Gemini, I mean, no, more so than Virgo and Pisces, you know, Gemini and Sag are, like, the total um, jack-of-all-trades midheavens. Basically, they could write a book and do a ton of other shit. That goes to both of them. Sag just gives more shits and tries to be the best at it, though. While Gemini just doesn't give two shits anymore because they experienced Sag in their fourth house and they're kind of running away from that and saying, ah, fuck this. I'm just gonna do whatever I want. So basically, Gemini has a lot of energy. Like I said, you know, they're ruled by Mercury. So they have a lot of energy to do a ton of projects and be known for a ton of stuff. You know, they, Sag doesn't have all that energy, but they do have some, and they will go, you know, be like 
Aries in a sense, but actually go through, like, follow through with work. So, when it comes to Gemini, though, um, a good example, I guess, is Dave Navarro. It's the only example I could think of. You know, the dude who hosts Ink Master? Yeah, that dude. I got into Ink Master, like, last season. <laughs> And I only watched Ryan Ashley Malarkey, but, you know, we're not going to talk about that. So, basically, when it comes to um, <laughs> um, Dave Navarro, he's known for Ink Master in Jane's Addiction. And I think in an interview he said, yeah, I think I'm going to direct a porno. And I'm just like, yeah, that that's pretty Gemini Midheaven right there. Like, you know, just a lot of things in those things may not appeal to some people or be done by some people, you know? Um, so, yeah, I think that's pretty give zero shits Gemini Midheaven right there. And when it comes to Sagittarius, it's basically like the same thing, but it, Sagittarius actually sounds like they give a shit and they put more effort into whatever the fuck they're doing. You know, Gemini does put in effort but they like to bounce off other people. They have to be with other people, in a sense, because of that Venus energy that they have. Uh, so, yeah. That's Gemini for you. I'm sorry if that sucked. You know what, maybe I'll do a whole entire video about Gemini just to make up for it, okay? Peace, let's move on to Cancer. Okay, number four, Cancer, the moon. They aren't Leo, they're not the winged eyeliner. They're the glow kit. They're the highlighter, you know. They ain't the eyeliner, they're the highlighter. You know, that's that's how I'm gonna explain them. They're the light shimmer. They're not the pizzazz. That made no sense. I don't wear makeup. <laughs> that was a bad analogy. Anyways, um, when they, they're like Leo and Taurus when they um, approach their goals. Basically, they're like a mix of that when it comes to Leo. In a sense, how they are alike. You know, they glow. But, well, Leo shines more. But, you know, Cancer glows. And they like to shine onto others. But it's more of like a glow. And it's like light. And it's not really in your face. But, you know, they like to say, Hey, people, I'm likable. And you guys are likable. And I like you. And, man, I love the world. And, yeah. That's how they're like Leo. You know, they are warm and inviting in that sense. And how they're like Taurus is they are dedicated to where they put their emotions and where the money is. If it ain't gonna secure them financially or emotionally, they're out. And they're not going to even bother. So basically, um, that's Cancer Midheavens. Um, they need to also have comfortable environments and whatnot. They like to care for others. They are the mama of the Zodiac, so they, you know, they're very protective over their projects. And they also have emotional ties to what they do. You know, if you think of Cancer as a crybaby all the time, you're fucking wrong. They will snap you in half with their claws. Because they can. And if you, like, go near their shit, they'll fight you, and you'll be like, whoa, what? And they'll be like, yeah, bitch, anger is an emotion. Fuck off. So basically, that's Cancer Midheavens for you. Um, a good example of this is Kendall Ray. I know some people do not like her. Um, you know what? Fuck whoever you like or not. I don't care about that. We're talking about astrology and examples, okay? We're not talking about which content creators you like or not. So basically, when it comes to Kendall Ray's content, you know, looking at it from a non... well, from an objective sense, I guess, um, she does put a lot of work and a lot of research into her projects, and she does have emotional ties to them. You know, she does like to bring missing cases and things like that to light. And, he, and she even makes astrology videos, okay? So that tied in pretty well. <laughs> you know, she does incorporate her interests into her YouTube videos. And if you think she's scamming um, her audience or not, who gives a shit? This is an astrology video, not a Petty Page drama video. So, yeah, I do like Petty Page's intro and, you know, all respect to her, but you know what? 
we're looking at things in an objective sense.